This is Inside Texas Politics with Jason Whiteley. Time now for Reporters Roundtable to put the headlines in perspective. Ross is back, Bud Kennedy from the Fort Worth Star-Telegram is here, and of course Bernadine Steptoe, the political producer at WFAA, joins us each week on this segment. Ross, to start with you and the impact that the coronavirus might have had on Bernie Sanders quitting the presidential race. What do you think it was? Well, I think, it, you know, it sucked the oxygen out of the room. All the attention uh, from the news media, from the public, from everybody else that might have gone to politics is now going to the disease. If he was going to stage a comeback or get his voice in or a foot in some way, uh, the opportunity left. And people aren't paying attention to politics really right now and aren't going to be for a while. I don't think he saw a path forward. And he obviously, Bud, couldn't fundraise because of social distancing and things like that. Jason, he couldn't raise money over Zoom and he couldn't have the big rallies. Most of all, he couldn't get young people revved up. You know, young people I you know, aren't very interested in the coronavirus and they weren't very interested in, in anything else right now. And so it, you know, it, it, he couldn't get his vote motivated. Bernadine, big question of what might happen to his delegates? That's, going, that's a very good question, but keep in mind, Democrats want the White House. So I think that uh, his delegates are going to go to Biden. It's just going to be a rocky road, a rocky road getting there. Uh, does that surprise you at all? It might be a rocky road. Are we going to see another 2016, Ross? No, I think this is going to settle down. I think that they're going to calm down and get into this. It's now pretty much a two-man race, and I you know, think we'll proceed from here. Oh, I think they're going to calm down. It's just going to take, because if you listen to them now, they're still trying to pretend that they're important. Uh, but let me Jason, ask he said, he, <laughs> Jason, he says he's going to stay on the ballot uh, you know, and still wants to have delegates have a section of the convention. Or are you in or out? He's out. There's no reason for people to keep going up, signing up to be delegates. Yeah, that's a good point. Ross, we saw a stern statement from the Texas Medical Association in Austin saying it will not tolerate any discrimination of Asian doctors. Apparently, there was some bullying going on around the coronavirus of right. Asian doctors. Um, that's the state's fastest growing demographic. Are you surprised we're seeing this? And do you expect any elected official might chime in? You know, I'm not completely surprised at it, but I don't see anybody officially supporting anything like that. I think that they're, you know, all a bit appalled about that. Um, I think TMA has probably got most of the management, state government, and local governments with them on this. Yeah, but I was a little surprised to see the, the TMA issue a statement on this, which tells me that this is a little, maybe a little more widespread than, uh, than you know, we would believe. And it was a strong statement against bullying doctors because of Asian descent. Uh, like you said, this is Texas' fastest growing group, particularly in the medical community, healthcare mm -hmm. workers. You know, these are people who are part of Texas or Texas needs very desperately. And the fact that both patients and it hit it, maybe even other medical professionals were showing some sort of prejudice, they don't want to put up with that. Bernadine, final word. We don't need that kind of action. Hey, we have a pandemic. Indeed so. Good deal, guys. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. And thank you for watching as well. Inside Texas Politics, right back here next Sunday on this station. We'll see you next week. Uh, stay healthy, keep safe distance from others, and have a good day.